My next guest is Alex Rodriguez, co-founder and CEO of Embark Trucks, a self-driving truck company that hails itself as achieving the first autonomous truck cross-country trip. He co-founded Embark in 2016, and he's been named one of Forbes's 30 under 30. He's got like such a cool, he's a Peter Thiel fellow. He's got all this cool stuff. Alex, so great to, to meet you. I just want to start this conversation by asking you to tell our audience about Marvin. Uh, thanks, for, uh, thanks for having me, Steve. Uh, so my introduction to self-driving, I've been doing this for many years. Uh, my introduction came when I built uh, a self-driving golf cart that became the first self-driving vehicle to operate on public roads in Canada. Uh, and we called it Marvin. So that was the, the introduction, the very first time I really got excited about this technology. And that was at the University of Waterloo. And as I understand, it was quite a hit. But look, I mean, I, you know, I want to kind of get into the trucks. I want to explain to people, you don't actually build the trucks, right? You outfit them. I'm told it's sort of like a software package or a Sirius XM radio would kind of do it, which I'd love you to describe. But, but to give this a bit of grit, right now in the United States, I don't know the situation in Canada, but the United States, we have a massive truck driver shortage. Uh, and on top of that, we now have, because of hackers, uh, Colonial Pipeline is shutting down gas delivery to mass number of people, which requires more trucks. We're in a real dilemma. And so trucks are now a very sexy issue in America. So how would your, how would Embark help solve, I mean, not this immediate problem, because I know it's too fast, but this is the kind of problem you're designed to uh, respond to. A am, am I wrong? Yeah, no, that's right. Uh, so Embark's actually based out of San Francisco. We also have an office in uh, Southern California. Uh, and our technology is designed to allow trucks to operate on the highway portion of the run uh, on their own. And so we can see this as a, a really unique capability to improve, as you mentioned, improve efficiency across the economy, improve uptime across the economy. There was actually a, a DOT study recently uh, that estimated that driverless trucks presented the opportunity to raise the average annual earnings for all U.S. workers by more than $200 a year. Uh, and so when you look at the bigger impact across manufacturing and commodities and our overall competitiveness, it is pretty transformative. Where are you right now in terms of deployment and testing and, you know, show and tell about what you've been able to do? Embark, uh, Embark's focus is on developing the software to power this technology. Uh, and we've been working on this for five years, which is longer than anybody else has been testing self-driving trucks on public roads. Uh, and so today we're getting to a point where the focus is really starting to turn to commercialization. So earlier this year, we announced our partner development program, uh, working with folks like AB InBev, Werner Enterprises, major shippers and carriers to start commercializing the technology and preparing big fleets to be able to operate self-driving trucks. Uh, that run Embark software. You know, you're still so young, I've been around for a while, that I've seen waves of technology come, you know, smartphones, uh, and now we all take them for granted, but there was a bit of concern about them at the beginning, or I remember 20 years ago how people didn't know how the internet was going to impact their lives, and they just hadn't figured that out yet, and they were there. But there's always this little hesitation, this kind of fear, uncertainty, anxiety about new stuff. And I'm wondering if, if you and your, your partner have thought about this at all, about how in an area where I know the statistics, I know that, you know, Embark or your kind of uh, approach to automation and automated driving, truck driving, would vastly change the safety field. But people feel, wow, there's not a person there. It must not be safe. Have you thought about those socio, socio, uh, di social dynamics a little bit? Yeah, we feel that it's incumbent upon us to engage both with the public and with regulators to make sure that people understand the value that this brings. And Embark has invested almost since the beginning of the company. Our, our public policy person was inside our first 10 hires. Uh, we spent a lot of time engaging with the public. We see those as both being really important to bring home the value that this technology brings to everyday people. When we talk about making the jobs of truck drivers able to be closer to home with a higher quality of life, uh, we talk about improving safety, as you mentioned, for everybody out on the roads and being able to make the goods that everybody's consuming at the end of the day cheaper and faster uh, and improve American competitiveness. When you're um, out there and you're kind of you know, thinking about what you're, gonna, you're, you're, you're bringing on, 
What were the kind of key factors that, that helped you move along? I understand you've been working with Peter Thiel, that you had Y Combinator, that you had others. You know, I'm sort of interested in the kind of ecosystem of innovation and what were the building blocks that you found most useful in either getting you the capital or getting you the entree to do what you've done? Yeah, we've been uh, incredibly lucky to work with some of the best, whether that's in the, the trucking world or it's in the investing community. Uh, and I think the thing that's been really effective for Embark is we bring people out and let them ride in the truck. Uh, you should come someday, Steve. Uh, and when Where people are sit they? down and Where they are the see trucks? the truck. Huh? Where are the trucks? Uh, they operate uh, mostly in the U.S. Sunbelt. If you want to come take a ride, you can come uh, visit our San Francisco office. Okay, I will be in San Francisco. I just want to find because I'm, I'm going to take you up on that. <laughs> All right. Okay, um, go ahead. But yeah, I was going to say, I think that what we've seen is people are really, uh, when, when we bring, whether it's leaders in the trucking space or leaders in the investing ecosystem, uh, when they actually sit in the truck and they see it in real life, they can recognize the, the uniqueness of what we're building. And we've been really lucky uh, to bring together this a great group of partners. I mentioned uh, some of the leading shippers and carriers we work with already. Uh, and of course, uh, as you as you mentioned there, uh, Embark's lead investors over the years include names like Y Combinator, Sequoia, Tiger Global, uh, who are um, really great partners that help us uh, develop and efficiently commercialize this technology for the U.S. market. You know, I've just finished reading a book by a friend of mine, Jim McKelvey, and I don't know if you've run across Jim. He was a co-founder of Square. He actually gave Jack Dorsey his first job. And this, this book is called The Innovation Stack. And in it, he sort of talks about how we um, overuse the word entrepreneur, that entrepreneur is really a word in the past that described a completely eccentric, obsessive, compulsive person that was running off the field when everybody was running the other direction. And so... Uh, uh, focused on that, that, that that kind of change and that sort of commitment is what a real entrepreneur is, and we've kind of cheapened that. And I'm just wondering if you're that real kind of entrepreneur, because I know you've been kind of winning you know, contests at 11, are, 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 you know, and, and I don't mean this in kind of a, a, a rude way, but I'm wondering how rude or compulsive or disruptive you've had to be <clears throat> in bringing a mobility um, uh, difference into this picture because a lot of people don't share your vision. What have you had to do personally to kind of shake them to realize that you're onto something very different? Well, well, Steve, I like to think that I'm uh, generally a, a likable person to get along with, you know, <laughs> but I'm certainly very passionate about robotics. Um, the one sentence story I'd give that I think really aligns with your, uh, your description is you mentioned I started doing robotics when I was 11 uh, and I changed high schools twice and picked my university uh, so that I could be on the best competitive robotics teams uh, over the course of uh, eight years doing competitive robotics. Uh, so I was very much somebody that uh, abandoned all my friends twice so that I could build better, more interesting robots. Uh, so definitely a little bit of the, the person you're talking about and certainly very passionate about robotics for my whole life. Uh, you asked kind of what does it take to really get people to see this different vision. And I think one of the things that Embark has consistently focused on is bringing a narrow application, bringing a solvable problem, so the trucking sector. And we have been saying since 2016 that trucking is the best market and technically the place to do this. Uh, and I've been uh, spending a lot of time educating folks across the spectrum. Uh, and I think you're starting to see major carriers, major OEMs, even some of our competitors who initially said that cars were the way to go, uh, pivoting and adopting some of Embark's, Embark's vision from back in 2016. Well, let me just give you one quick question we've taken from the Austin from Dustin Suters of Clemson University is what are the biggest unanswered human factor questions around vehicle automation. I mean, I don't know if you have a quick answer on that, but you know, what are the uh, dimensions that we still have to solve on the people side of the automated truck um, vision? Yeah, I think the biggest piece for how we look at this from a people scenario is making sure that the trucks are able to drive uh, around bad human drivers. Uh, when we look at what's really challenging, mm. it's actually uh, when it's dealing with, with good drivers, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, and so a focus of Embarks over the last couple of years has really been handling cut-ins, handling people that are trying to merge where they really shouldn't. Uh, and so that's something that over the last five years, we've had to spend a lot of time, uh, not just building a truck that drives in the 
nominal scenario, but one that drives with uh, sort of the, the realities of human imperfection on the roads. Well, I'll just say in conclusion, I'm fascinated. I will get to San Francisco and I do want to ride in the truck. I also think you ought to like invite maybe the Secretary of Transportation, Pete Buttigieg. This is the sort of thing he really likes to do. Uh, so maybe get an invite into him, too, because I'm sure he'd, he'd enjoy that. But um, Alex Rod Rodriguez, CEO and co-founder of Embark, really appreciate you telling your story and joining us today. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having me.